Hello friends, with Firefox supporting CSS has selector, now it's really the time to start using this amazing functional pseudo class in CSS. Based on my understanding, you can divide the usage of has into five categories. And in this video, we will walk through 10 practical examples to showcase these use cases. So let's go. Using has as a parent selector is the basic usage, but yet the most common and useful one. Basically, you can use it to check the existence of an element. For example, an icon in a button. So if my button has an icon inside of it, I want its display to be flex and have a gap of 10 pixels. Or let's say you want to add an arrow or a plus sign like this for any of the navbar items that have a drop down like this. You can definitely use has for this. In case of a drop down, we always have a UL inside an ally, right? So we can target the after of an a tag that is a direct child of an li which has a ul as its child and in that case we apply our plus sign and some margins and don't let has scare you it's like any other selectors you can add anything before inside and after it so let's say i have a card and i want its layout to be different when there is a paragraph next to its image tag okay so as you see we have the image and the P in this example. And for the second one, for the first one, we only have the image. So here I can use the next sibling combinator. So basically I want any paper that has a P as an immediate sibling to an image. So when we have a P right after an image inside a card, we can change the layout with flex direction here, for example. Do you see how easy it is to have different kind of layout for our card? And we didn't even have to use extra classes here. You can also give has a comma separated list of elements. So in this case, it will check to see if either of these element exists inside a paper. It applies this style. We can also combine it with not. So maybe you want to do this or you can wrap not around has. And in this case, it means any paper that does not have any image inside of it. Just be careful about something. You cannot nest has like this, but you can chain it. You can say, hey, if my card has an image and also has a paragraph then do this this works like and logical operator and it checks for the both conditions to apply this style as the last example of this category let's see how we can validate our form using has so basically you can do that by checking the state of an element inside has so in this case our form is gonna have a border of red when this condition is true. So this input is gonna be invalid when there is less than two characters inside of it. So if I write something here that is less than two, we're gonna get a red border. The second use case for has is selecting the previous sibling or siblings. For example, take a look at this checkbox and label. In the markup, I have label before the input, right? So how can I target this label when this input is checked? So this is actually the demo, right? How can I create this? I can target a label that has a checked input right next to it. And that's how you can use a next sibling combinator to select the previous sibling. And if we can do this, then we can use a subsequent sibling combinator to select all the previous siblings instead of only one. Let me show you a practical example. Take a look at this breadcrumb here. We don't want a separator like this for the last item, right? And if you look at the markup here, you see we have a current class 
for the last item. Therefore, we can select all the breadcrumb items that have a current class as their next siblings. And it doesn't have to be the next sibling. As long as there is a current class, the selector matches, so you can have these styles for your element. By the way, I saw this example in a video from Eric Meyer, and I'm gonna add the link to the description. But what if we didn't have this current class and we wanted to select our element only based on the HTML tags? Well, we could select the list items that have a list item without an A tag inside of them as the next sibling. Do you see how easy it is to do magic in CSS now? Very cool. Now let me show you a fun demo as our last example in this category. The first time I saw this effect on Chris Core's code pen and the idea is very simple. You have to select two items before and two items after the element that has been hovered, right? You can pick even one and the effect still work pretty fine. And here's the code. Here I'm selecting the next child and here I'm selecting the next next one. And here we are doing the previous one and here we are doing the prev prev one, let's say. <laughs> and it works so easy. We are aiming for an li that has an li next to it and this one has an li as its next sibling and this one needs to be Howard. And that's how you do this effect. Another great ability that has gives us is to style an element based on the number of its children. Basically, we can do quantity queries in CSS. Bramos has a very great article on this and you can see the examples are here. And basically the idea is to use NTA child to count the children inside an element. And recently I found this very cool example that uses this exact technique. Here, let me show you my demo. Suppose you have a table and you set a max height for your table and you want to remove this max height when you have a lot of data. So here I'm saying if I have three or more rows, then remove this max height. And if I go and remove one of my rows right now to make them less than three, see, I get my max height back. Very cool use case. Okay, the fourth one is the anywhere selector and opens up a wide range of possibilities for us. The idea is to use has with your top level elements like your root, body, or the root of your component and check a condition within the children of those elements. And when that condition is met, you can apply your style to any part of the page you like because again, we are talking about the root element. Here, let me show you what I mean in this image. Here, we can check the body if it has a selected element inside of it and then somewhere else in the body, which is actually inside header, we can apply some styles to our cart element. A popular example for this scenario is switching the theme using has, and it's very simple. This is a select element, right? I don't even know where it is. As long as there is an option with a value of light and has been checked, then I want to update all my variables to have a different theme. And I can do the same for dark, and I can do exactly that for my high contrast value. And you can use the same technique to change your layout like this. So here I have some radio typed input, and I'm looking for one that is checked with a value of list, and based on that, I'm giving it this grid template colum columns of 1FR. And that's how I get this layout. And then, if the value that is checked is grid, I change its layout like this. And that's how we get this lovely example here. And last but not least, I call this one all but me selector. 
Take a look at these cards. I'm blurring all of them except the one that is hovered. And this is the selector for this. And you can read the selector like this. When the parent has an ally hovered, then select all the allies that aren't hovered. And that's how you get this done. And that is all. I created this collection on my Coatwin account and added all these examples to it. And I will do my best to keep it updated. So what's your favorite use case for Has? Send me a demo in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.